What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be taking a look at Planet Crafter. It's a game that came about four or five days ago. In fact, I think I, <laughs> I think I had a key for this like a long, long time ago as they were like developing it. But it always felt kind of rough to me, so I wanted to wait until it got a little bit further on into early access before I went ahead and gave it a slot on the old time list. Today we're going to take a look at it and we're going to see what things can be improved, what things are good, what things are bad, all that kind of stuff. If you don't know about this game and you haven't seen it elsewhere already, this is a game about terraforming Mars. Uh, there's lots and lots of that going around right now. There seems to be peak public interest in turning the red planet green. And so anyways, you're a lone astronaut on a planet. It's been compared to Subnautica. I don't know if I would go that far from the time that I've spent like taking a look at it. But it is a sandbox base building game where ultimately there's a lot of little goals that you can play around with. So we're going to spend about 30 minutes with the game today. It's probably going to be fairly heavily edited just due to the fact that there's a lot of like resource farming and stuff like that. We'll try to see what we can get done and at the end of the video I'll try to give you three or four minutes of my compressed thoughts about what I've seen so far. It's weirdly quiet in here and if you've also noticed that it's weirdly quiet in here it's because this front menu does not have any music or backing track or anything else. It's just hanging out here. I would think they could put some just like atmospheric noise back here like you know that generic like wah like I'm inside of a spaceship sound that's like in every sci-fi movie or whatever else right here. I think that would help out a lot. Inside the options menu, everything's pretty utilitarian. These are more or less like default kind of menus right here. Uh, not too stylized, nothing else going on with it, basically bare bones. Let's dive on in. New game right there. It looks like we have Survival 1. It doesn't appear as though you're actually able to rename the profile. Okay, uh, the game mode, there's standard, relaxing, intense, and hardcore. What's the difference? So standard, you will drop items when you die. Okay, relaxing, there is no consequence to death. Intense, every item in your inventory is destroyed when you die. Oxygen, health, and water go down faster. Okay, we'll just leave it on standard then. And then for our landing site, it looks like we've got different spawn locations. As I understand it, I think this game has like a static map like Subnautica does, where you're supposed to be exploring and finding things as you go along and so anyways there's survival one right there let's go ahead and launch straight on into it and we'll see what the game has on offer oh okay uh, first things first mouse sensitivity by default is apparently set to like one DPI so let me go ahead and fiddle with that okay so I've got it at a suitable level for right now for whatever reason by default the game has the uh, has the has the turn speed and has like basically the mouse sensitivity set to like three percent just straight out of the box. Uh, we got a big red planet right here, and it looks like we've got three meters, health, water, and O2. Okay, so our first step is that it wants me to craft a backpack. Do I just do that for my inventory? Do we have like a fabricator inside of here? Uh, it looks like we restore our oxygen by going back inside of our pod. We do have a fabricator right here, and it looks like we can manufacture all that stuff from this spot. So, a list of things we need. Oxygen tank, we've got backpack, and we've got microchip construction. Okay, so there's backpack and there is oxygen tank. So we're going to need a bunch of iron, a bunch of magnesium, and a bunch of cobalt. Sounds good. Uh, what does it take to make the... So we just got to find ice. Okay, I don't know if there was any special process or anything that was going to go along with making the water. But let's have a look around. It looks like resources are just like variously scattered all over the place. I do like the sound effect that they used for the hand tool. That sounds pretty good. It's got a nice kind of like retro futuristic sort of clickety clackety Wayland yutani computer sound to it that I think sounds pretty okay all right one thing they could do is as the so as the units are flying towards your gun right there they could actually have the units kind of get smaller and shrink down as they go towards the gun to sort of exemplify or at least show that like the items are being condensed and like sucked into the gun a little bit right now it just feels like the default models are kind of flying into the gun and disappearing sporadically all right, let's go back inside and get some more oxygen. Uh, but as far as resource gathering goes, it seems to be pretty simple, and there doesn't seem to be anything wild and crazy going along with it. Is there anything inside the crate? Oh, there is. There's a bunch of food. There's a seed. There's some oxygen capsules and some water. Okay, so that takes a little bit of pressure off. What does this say? Welcome to your assigned planet. Your mission is to advance the terraformation process of the world. Generate O2 heat and pressure to do so. First reach 175,000 TI and create a blue atmosphere. By myself? You know how incompetent I am, right? You know how terrible of an... Like, basically what you've done is you've made a corpse, all right? I am not going to make this planet any better in any way. You've basically just made, like, a desiccated future skeleton on the side of a big red rock. 
Okay, so I took a little bit of time and I've gathered up the materials we need to do the basics that it wants me to do right now. And so we will jump on into the crafting menu and we will make this pack pack. There's the pack pack right there. We can actually just slap that on and it looks like it added an extra row of cells that we can use uh, for storing things. The oxygen tank I think is going to be principally important. I don't know if I have any magnesium laying around. I've got some copper out here, and I've got some cobalt. Do I have magnesium in my inventory? Oh, God. Oh, God, the orange. The orange is upon us. I'm blind. Okay, all right. My eyeballs have firmly been baked out of the side of my head. There's nothing left there except for kind of an oily residue that used to be eyeballs. Uh, let me see if I can find this magnesium. I think there was magnesium in a crate over here, actually, so it might be easier just to grab it out of this little loot crate. My God. Okay. I don't know if we're supposed to be outside right now. It seems like maybe, I mean, it looks like they maybe sent somebody, oh, there's a ruin up there. We should probably go check that out once we've got a little bit beefier of an oxygen tank, but for right now, it doesn't feel like our oxygen tank is really going to enable us to get over to that area and do any type of exploration. All right, so inside of here, we've got an oxygen tank rocking along. Uh, let's go ahead and throw that on. That looks like it increased our oxygen by about 45. That's not too much. Your oxygen does go down while you're sprinting. One thing I would like to see is I'd like to see a little bit more arm motion out of the gun on the right while you're walking. And if they can't do that, more specifically while you're sprinting, the gun and your other hand on the left and the right should be kind of going back and forth for like immersive purposes right there. The fact that the gun stays stiff while you're running around is one of those things that I would definitely seek to kind of like... Uh, remediate? Is that the word I'm looking for? Fix. I'll just go with an easy word. Uh, that's what I would seek out to... I guess it's not broken. Like, it's functional right now. Fix sort of implies that it's broken. But anyways, to refine. There we go. That's a better word for it. I found some squash seeds. Alright. Well, now it wants me to make a microchip construction. So I need two more magnesiums, but other than that, we're good to go. So let me go do that. Alrighty, we got the stuff that we needed. Magnesium's kind of just, I don't know, dude, all the resources are kind of just sprawled out all over the place. I personally prefer that the nodes be hidden a little bit better, like in the terrain, like along like the rock outcrop over there, and like little ones along the base of this guy right here. But like, that's something that I think can be changed around a little bit later for immersive purposes. It's not like that huge of an issue. So we've got like microchip construction. Okay. And I guess that just goes over there. So now I can make, like, key structures or something. And it looks like we've also got decon over here. If I've got some silicon laying around here somewhere, there's one. I've just been piling up all the resources that I'm picking up right next to my base. I've made kind of a communal trash pile out there. All right. So we have the means to do stuff now. So on the Q key, we're going to have our ability to build. Uh, it looks like we can make a living compartment if we've got the iron. I don't know if I can blueprint this stuff prior to making it like you can in Subnautica. But it looks like we've got a bunch of stuff here. So we've got a living compartment. We've got a airlock. Looks like we've got some stairs. We've got some lamps. We've got foundational grids. And so we probably want to go all in on the foundational grids would be my guess for right now. I'm probably going to need about a bazillion of those. So let me just make some water real fast. I know that there's a whole bunch inside my chest over here. But I'm not that worried about... Oh, it's just a one-for-one -one conversion. Nice. I don't know how much water I get out of this, but we'll try it. Oh, it actually fully refills your meter. Okay. That's not... You know, it's it's more generous than I expected, I guess. It's not stingy. Uh, there's iron. We have four. We have, we're going to need a lot more iron, I, I think, is the lesson of the story here. I don't think there's too many ways around that. So, in the meantime, we're going to go ahead and dump the rest of this stuff out here. And, like, I just want to grab... Oh, my health. Okay, I guess I'll restore my health. I actually don't actually know how I lost health. Maybe your health is interchangeable with being like a food meter or something like that. I don't know. Uh, let's gather up. A oh, that's silicon. I don't want that. Yeah, don't 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 gather that. Let that let that be. We don't need that. What we need is iron. There we go. All the iron in the world, so that I can set up my foundations. Okay, so I got a few of the little bits and pieces around. It's a little bit dark right now because I guess it's nighttime. Uh, but we will go for kind of some foundational building here. So where I'd like things to go is this looks okay to me. We got to get this kind of evened out, though. 
That looks all right. Uh, building seems to be satisfying. Uh, do they have a snap-in that you can do? They do. Good. That's what I wanted to check for. I wanted to make sure there was a snap-in. That's one of those things that should always be available. Otherwise, it's just going to be, like, impossible to line things up. There we go. I'm probably not doing this from the best angle right now, but if, I, if, I, if I'm correct, I think we're going to need, like, one more... Was it just one iron for each of these? Oh, very nice. Okay, so I've got five left. I mean, technically, we could expand this out a little bit further, or we could save the iron for future projects. What's it going to take in order to get the living compartment done? I need some titanium. Okay. I'll probably make, like, a big container in here. Do I even have titanium around? I may. I think I was skipping titanium because I didn't really need it for anything, but it should be kind of like a bluish material that's around. I think this might be our guy right here. Yeah. Titanium's got kind of like a lumpy thing going on. There's a specific word for it in geology, and I don't remember what the word is. It's actually probably going to bother me. There's definitely a word for it. Now I can't remember. It's a very scientific-y sounding word. It's a word that makes you sound real important when you say it out loud and makes people go, Oh, clearly this guy knows what he's talking about. This guy definitely knows what's going on. Uh, so we've got a habitat over here. I'll probably just dump that in right there. Did these clump? Or, like, how do these work? Can you make these bigger or, like, attached to one another? It looks like you can. So, I don't have a problem. Ew, it doesn't line up on the edges. Huh. Okay. Don't know how I feel about that. That's gonna bother my OCD. I need some silicon, dude. Where am I silicon at? I know I got some silicates around here somewhere. What you got for me? Let me get that, uh, let me get that... Where, where, where is it at? Where's that, where's that glassy good stuff? There's one right there. All right, let's slap a door on this thing and just kind of see what we can do with it. I kind of wanted to go, like, maybe a two-by-two two and give us a little bit more space. Maybe that's what I'll do. Maybe I'll save up. Yeah, so I think your health meter, from looking at it, just making a quick abridge here, I've noticed that the health meter just kind of goes down on its own. Like, it's kind of just doing its thing over there. And so anyways, as it's going down, I, I think it's supposed to be kind of like a combination hunger meter. So we've answered that question. Uh, I don't really need the silicon. I need the iron. Let me get the good stuff over here. I need the iron. Okay, so I've got the rest of my goodies here. So I'm just going to try to get this building placed. I don't know if it's going to love me or not. Uh, it actually snapped in pretty easily. There we go. Uh, what's it going to cost me to get some stairs running on up to this thing? Just like one thing of iron? Okay. That looks about right, although I don't know if it's centered. Yeah, I think that's the centering that we're going for right there. And then we've got, like, a big old door that we can throw on here. That's a little bit. I might put a platform in front of this and then move the stairs over, but for right now, it's fine. Uh, this thing looks like it independently generates oxygen all by its own. It doesn't need any input to do that. So that's cool. I would like the ability to customize these inside spaces and actually move the LEDs and whatnot around. Aside, like, the extra RGB stuff, you know what I mean? Just customize a little bit. So it wants me to make a drill. I gotta make a craft screen, and I gotta make some blueprints. Okay. Yeah, we can do the blueprints right now. We can get a wind turbine going. I do think that the wind turbine is a good idea. How much iron do I have? I got two irons, so we can set up two turbines. I wonder if I can just put them on top of the building. Is that possible? Because I was just going to put it up there like one of those little twisty propeller hats from like the 50s. Oh, it looks like I can put it up on the roof. Ah, well, whatever. Doesn't matter. Uh, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to do my best to line these up, but I don't know if it's going to work that way. Give me another one. Looks like they can't be too close to one another. And honestly, it's going to drive me nuts if this isn't lined up properly. Ah, uh, it's a little bit off. I'm going to have to ignore that, but it's going to make my teeth hurt. I can't help it. I just, everything needs to be lined up. I would love for them to add, like, a grid of squares or something that overlays the ground, but I bet that would negatively affect performance. But, yeah, I'm kind of obsessive about things being in the right spot. All right, so basically what we have learned here is that I need a lot more iron, so I'm going to go do that. Okay, so let's get this place decorated a little bit, shall we? I've got some things laying around that I think will be fine. We're going to need a desktop. I don't think there's, like, any way around that. We just need a spot to hold our screens and whatnot. 
However, getting it lined up might be a little bit of- Actually, I did that pretty good, dude! Can you tell that I Photoshop every single night for thumbnails and center things? Not bad, dude! I'll take it! I'll take it! I honestly, I did way better. It's like slightly out of alignment, but it's better than I expected it to be. I'll take it. Like, it's acceptable. We've got our energy levels, we've got our terraformation. Let's get the blueprint screen up and rocking. And we'll just kind of have these sort of like tilted, like that. I think that looks okay. And then we need another screen over here, but we're gonna need some silicon and we're gonna need some cobalt. And so I don't think I grabbed any while I was out and around, but there should be some laying over here. So we got some cobalt right there. I will take those cobalts. And then silicon, where are you hiding at? I thought, I swear to God, I had a bunch of silicon somewhere. Okay, so the next screen to go up is gonna be this bad boy right here for our, let's go with the energy levels first. I don't think we're going to be able to fit everything on here. Like, we may need another desk, but we've got our blueprints now, and we've got our other stuff rocking. So it looks like our progression is gated by how much we have terraformed the planet so far. So as we raise the KTIs, or the TIs, we get new tiers of stuff. Okay, good to know. Uh, and then on this side, it looks like we've got our energy levels right now. We are producing 2.4 kilowatt hours. Okay, so we've got about 1.8 kilowatt hours left. That's fine. Dude, I've been racking my brain to kind of remember what that what that texture is. Like, it's this roly-poly texture that's on the... It's on the titanium. I can't remember, dude. It's got it's such a good $10 word. And it was such like a niche question from like a junior year exam that like nobody actually uses in conversation. And now it's bothering me that I can't remember it. I'm gonna need some water. There we go. I'm gonna need some foodles too, man. We got any foodles around here? Yeah, let me get some foodles rocked out. We've got a Lerma seed. I don't know what the Lerma seed does. Uh, so a veggie tube, so we can generate O2 if we put a seed inside this device. Okay, let's go do that. Maybe it'll slowly start to, does it go on the outside the house, or does it go on the inside the house? I don't know. It looks like it definitely does not go on the outside the house. So we want this to go right here. Okay, so we have a veggie tube. Uh, veggie tube? Yes, you will have a lerma seed inside of you. And so apparently it is now oxygenating, but is is costing us some of our kilowatt seconds. I don't even know. I'm really, really bad with power grids, so I don't know the difference between a kilowatt hour and a kilowatt second. Okay, I'm not an elect I'm not an electrician. That's not I'm not like a PG&E employee. I don't I don't know things like that. Then again, the further and further I get away from college, I've been out for like 10 years now, and I'm beginning to think I don't really know anything about anything. Yeah, it's that texture right there. I wanted to say oolitic, but it's not oolitic. There's another word that starts with like an M or like a B or something like that. And like, I've been rolling it around in my head for like half this episode while I'm making cuts and stuff, and I've just, I can't remember it. I'd have to go dig it out of my notes, like my field stuff. It was like one of those words that you tell yourself you're going to remember, and then you just kind of use it for the test and then forget it forever. Uh, so we've got to do a heater. So it looks like we need iridium for that. So that's not going to be an option. However, a drill will generate pressure. So this is drilling for gases underneath the ground. Okay, cool, man. We're mining for space farts. I'm okay with it. Uh, let's go ahead and get our, our space fart grid rocking over here. There we go. Space farts. Do I have any more titanium? I'd actually like to make a couple of them. We might as well. Oh, look at that, dude. My TIs are going up right now. TI. TIP coming live from the VIP. All right, never mind. I got off on a tangent. So I noticed there's a T2 craft bench in here, and we can make it right now. And I feel like that's a, a strong decision. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to err on the side of strength. And we'll just put that right there. And it does look impressive. I mean, it is kind of cool. What does it make? So we can get a microchip for construction. Don't we already have that, though? Oh, we can get a headlamp. Okay, there's a backpack. Oh, an exoskeleton. That's kind of cool. I kind of want that. Yeah, make that. I want that. Exoskeleton sounds rad. Let's have one of those. Oh, I see what it does. It makes my equipment list larger. Gotcha. Okay, so that's one of those, like, vital upgrades that you got to pick up, like, right now. Okay, okay. Uh, I'm going to make an oxygen capsule just in case. And I'm going to make a water bottle just in case. 
Uh, I've got to get another desk in here that's going to, like, chart our terraformation pro- like, our terraforming progress. And so I guess I'll probably just put it, like... There? Did I do good? Ah, it's kind of centered. Yeah, dude, it's fine. Uh, what else do we have going on? So for the terraforming thing, I just got to go get some silicon. I think we are going to need more energy generation, though, so we're going to have to get on top of that as well. Okay, so let's take a look at our terraformation. Oh, it's like a big screen. Where does that go? Oh, you got to, like, smack it on the wall over here. Okay. Can I just put it, like, anywhere? It looks like the answer to that question is going to be a shocking no. Okay, so we'll put the terraforming panel, like, right... It's kind of hard to say where it's centered at. That seems okay to me. Like, that's fine. So we're raising the pressure right now, and... We have 46 PPQ, which I think is 47 parts per quadrillion. I think. Uh, so yeah, there's 48 oxygen parts per quadrillion molecules around here. It's pretty bad. It could be better. It, it could definitely be more optimal. What do I need for a heater? I needed iridium for that. That's right. And we actually don't know where to get iridium from. So, we are going to have to sort that out. We are going to have to figure out where baby iridium is born. I do have a storage crate, so that's pretty sweet. I'm going to go ahead and throw all that stuff in there. I've got an oxygen capsule. Honestly, I'd kind of like to make another one because I think we're going to have to get off the beaten grid a little bit before we're actually going to run into iridium. So let me get an oxygen capsule real quick. And that's all that I've got going right now. Another oxygen capsule right there. I'm going to try to bring back like everything good that I can, but no guarantees. We are getting a little bit low on food, but let's strike out in a direction. I see a crate over here. So I'm going to go for the crate. There's nothing down in that little crevasse right there. I mean, going up to the space wreck is an idea. I'm sure there's probably a bunch of useful stuff up there, but I'm guessing that's probably not where I'm going to find iridium. I see something kind of reddish over here. Oh, it's just a rock in front of another node. It's just a rock. All right. Well, when you sprint, your oxygen does go down faster. So I've been trying to resist the urge to, like, speed racer around the place. But, hey, eggplant seeds. Okay, I'll take that. A little bit of iron. Definitely take that, too. Take the magnesium. Feel like there's cobalt everywhere, and I feel like I don't quite need it. Well, inside this crate over here, it looks like I found some cool stuff. We got a super alloy, and we got a blueprint microchip, which says that it unlocks a new blueprint for me. So, like, I'm totally down for that experience. We've got about two oxygen capsules left. I was kind of trying to take a look around and see if there was any caves around here that I could like mentally mark for the future. There's some kind of like methane gas flow or like ammonia flow over here. Dude, space is crazy. Space is crazy. Look upon the ammonia river. Look upon the great piss Rio. All right, um, yeah, I'm gonna need another oxygen capsule. That's probably a good idea. Uh, looks like there's some giant ice towers over there. I mean, we just, we totally and completely lack the oxygen volume right now to get over there though. That's the part that's rough about it. Oh, there's a spacecraft over there, too. I just don't have the oxygen. Like, I'd have to fill my inventory up entirely with oxygen bottles to have a shot at making it out to some of these nodes. And so I think I'm just going to head back. Well, I've expanded operations ever so slightly. We've got a few more wind turbines, and we've got a few more drills. I would suggest that we continue, like, trying to grid out some of these wind turbines. They're slightly out of alignment, which is just bugging the absolute hell out of me but I don't think there's any other way around it. Like, I'm trying to get them lined up good and clean, but the game does not make it easy. And so I think this game's going to be kind of hard on people that are OCD about placements. I might be wasting my time right now with, like, inefficient placement styles and whatnot. Like, we might just be replacing this stuff later on down the line. But I'll take that chance once I get there. So there's our wind power grid right now. Oh, I'm dying. Hold on. Human beings need oxygen. I forgot about that. Yeah, we've got about 300 TI rocking right now. So inside of here, I can actually make a tier two, a tier two oxygen tank, which is really, really good. In fact, we could actually use that. So I need to run out and get some silicon and some titanium and like some magnesium and stuff. But that'll help. So silicon, magnesium, titanium. 
Pretty easy pick for a pretty easy upgrade. I walked right outside my front door and it was laying right there. So that was actually like a nine second cut. Uh, let's make the tier two oxygen tank. I got to take this one off though, I think. There we go. Let's see the improvement. 200, it gave me an extra minute. So we're up to like three minutes and 20 seconds now that we can go. That's not great. Um, I definitely prefer that we be like at the five, 10 minute mark right now. But if our oxygen refills every single like so if one oxygen container always fills a vessel of any size that means we actually just got ourselves like several more minutes of being out in the middle of nowhere and so anyways i think you guys will like never forgive me if i don't go up to the spaceship before we end the episode so let me gather things for the great journey to go up the mountain and then we'll go check out the spacecraft and then we'll call it a day right there and actually because of our terraformation index uh, we have a new backpack that we just unlocked as well, which will actually be helpful because I've been having inventory space problems. So let's, uh, oh, I see what went wrong here. Oh, this presents an interesting issue. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Let's go ahead and clear things out real fast. Oh yeah, I gotta buy a blueprint too. We've got a blueprint buyer over here, so we can get, like, a better solar panel. Yeah, decode a microchip. Agility Boots T1. All right, that sounds vaguely magical. I think I'm okay with it. And we needed iron, we needed silicon, and I think we needed titanium in order to make the new backpack. Is that what it was? Yeah. There we go. Tier 2 backpack. Nice, dude. Look at all that beautiful, loverly space. I'll take it. Okay. Uh, so we got agility boots. Like, how are agility boots going to help me? I need fabric, and I need a two aluminiums, and it'll make me run faster. Okay, yeah, sounds good. Uh, let's go up to the spaceship, I guess. I've got a bunch of oxygen bottles, so we should be okay. Let's head up there and kind of see what's rattling around on the old derelict. All right, so from what I'm seeing here, I think we can extrapolate a couple of facts. Uh, first and foremost, we are not the first people that have been sent here to do this thing. Uh, it looks like much larger teams that are much better equipped uh, have been sent here previously. Either that or these people just accidentally crashed over here. God only knows. Uh, let's see if we can get up in the cargo bay here and just see what kind of goodies we can find around. Oh, look at that. There's a cave over. Okay, stay on task. ADD, go away. Fine. I, I, gotta, I gotta check out the ship first. I can't get myself into trouble. So... Inside the spaceship. Oh, it gets mighty dark up in here. Oh boy, I can't see. There is a storage crate with a super alloy, though. This might be very dangerous. Oh, is that a free heater? Oh, do I need the deconstructor tool in order to get in there? There we go. I can't see too good. Oh, but we can get a heater over here. Hey, that gave us the iridium back, though. Okay, so I think we're going to need the headlamp before we can really dive into this place and figure out if it's going to be that helpful. I had a feeling this might happen. I saw that toward... Well, I like that lighting effect right there. It looks pretty good from that angle. Doesn't look bad. The rest of the game, we're back into the world of orangey terror at the moment. But yeah, we're going to need a headlamp. But I guess we're probably supposed to pick that place apart for bits and pieces basically while we're in the neighborhood uh, this looks to be some kind of ice and it melts at a hundred nano kelvin i don't know i don't know what little n big k is but it looks like there's resources trapped up inside there all right we still haven't found the absolute best place to get iridium from is there fall damage you know i gotta test this right Okay, that fall was kind of severe. <laughs> that fall was a little bit more aggressive than I thought it would be. It was like, shoom, as it rocketed me back down towards the ground. All right, well, I'm going to go back to base, and let's reinstall that heater, and we'll kind of see how that helps out with our terraforming index. Somehow I doubt that, like, a barbecue grill-style heating coil is going to be enough to heat up an entire planet. But, hey, baby steps. But anyways, some thoughts about Planet Crafter. This game was made by a two-person team, and honestly, I think given the limitations of their team size and their budget, I think they've done a good job at scene setting for future early access updates. Uh, the game runs smooth as butter on my rig, which is by no means brand new, which is really, really nice to see. 
Uh, for all the utilitarian menus on the opening screens, once you're actually inside the game proper, everything seems to be pretty well laid out. The icons are serviceable, the menus do the jobs that they've set out to do, the key structure for the controls are well condensed and well done, uh, the building feels tight and responsive, and while I'd like further tools to keep outside constructions on grid and lined up with one another, I'm pleased with what they've shown so far. I'm not a huge fan of the loose rocks laying around as resources. Like, I personally prefer that the nodes be a little bit more hidden inside the textures of like various rock outcroppings and whatnot but I think that's more of a personal thing on my end and I like the idea of the world being fully open all of Subnautica to take a good look at and figure out while simultaneously making the planet more habitable. I'm not sure how much content is in this early build from what I've seen though in this first impressions video They've got me convinced that the game has solid foundations, despite the little polish things that have popped up from time to time, like the arms moving while you run, and stuff like that. So much so, in fact, that I think I'm going to dedicate a stream to this game on the day that the video goes live. So I'm going to put a pin in this video for right now, and we'll go ahead and pick it up, and we're going to stream the game for about four hours on the day that the video goes up. Uh, and if you're unsure about when I'm going to go live, you can always talk in my Discord, and I let people know before I go live every day. Uh, but I do want to explore the game a little bit further. I see the same promise here that I think Subnautica had in its earlier builds. The difference here is that Subnautica had kind of like a very polished narrative idea at the beginning, but its performance was really, really bad. This game has really, really good performance, but a lot of the scene set and I guess uh, a lot of the narrative elements are not implemented or existing as of right now. So it's actually like the opposite of Subnautica. Subnautica had a lot of really cool like storyline ideas but ran like trash when it first came out. This game doesn't have like any presence of storyline stuff aside from the beginning pitch but it runs really really well straight out of the gate. And so anyways I'm curious. I think this could turn into something really awesome once they slap the 1.0 on it. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block we had planet crafter tomorrow we will more than likely have something else i will see you all then thank you for spending your time with me and that's about all that i've got bye everybody